to look back there. there. It's still scary time. It's still October, the second it scariest is. time of year outside of November if you work retail. That's the most <laughs> scary time of year. <laughs> That's fair. So, Absolutely. Welcome to the Retro Boost podcast, hosted by yours truly, uh, Mike. And joining me today once again is my friend, Tori. Maybe. Still unsure. It could be. It Still could be unsure. Thomas. It could be someone else. Uh, I'm very suspicious because I recently watched a movie where a man escapes custody by cutting the face off of someone else, and I'm not entirely convinced that you uh, may have whoever it is under behind those eyes could have done that. Mm-hmm. Probably not. Mm-hmm. You look very clean. Uh, that was that's the one part nope. where it falls apart. Is if they tried to clean his face at all, they would have been like, "This is someone else's face." <laughs> I could be AI, right? This whole this whole thing could be AI that you created. <laughs> this one thing over there is AI <laughs> <laughs> generated. So we're gonna. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so we're gonna continue. Our uh, October movies discussion, each of us bringing two uh, favorites to the table to uh, discuss and recommend. Uh, If you haven't seen these movies, obviously do see them. I mean, in the last episode, Tori brought out Sounds of the Lambs, which is just, like, one of those, like, important movies that, like, everyone should see. It's, like, something that elevates filmmaking as a whole. Uh, (laughs) You know? So, like, definitely see that. You don't have to see, like, Dog Soldiers, but, like, do see Sons of the Lambs. Uh, so, like, they're all, they're all like, fun movies, obviously. Uh, so we're going to continue that today. We've brought two more picks. Uh, Jaws 2, actually, elevates filmmaking. See Jaws, see all of Tori's things. You can disregard my things, because I just keep bringing, like, cult garbage to the table. Uh, <laughs> Jaws and Sons well, of the Lambs. <laughs> I thought about that, and I was like, man... I think I just like wanted to discuss the films I really like, and I didn't <laughs> like. I, I I didn't understand the assignment like at all. <laughs> I was just like, I'm just gonna bring the movies I love, and it's gonna be great. <laughs> uh, no, I think I, those are still like you still nailed it. I mean, the oh, I keep hitting this thing. Um, they're fantastic movies, and like no one can say otherwise. Uh, and they're great movies for this time of year because Jaws is still, at its core, a creature feature and Silence of the Lambs is a very good horror thriller. Uh, Mm -hmm. So they're great movies. I wasn't expecting so much class to be coming out of your picks, basically. I was like, he's going to bring a virus or like... Something like oh. that. <laughs> oh, I love that movie so much. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good, was, but it's so not. That's what I was expecting, and then like you way threw me off. And I was like, oh my god, I picked Dog Soldiers as my second pick. Um, at least American Whale from London is like regarded as a classic nowadays. I at least have that much going for me. Uh, but no one's right. pining over watching Dog Soldiers again except for me. <laughs> I, although watching it again, it is still very good because I had to, I had to like do the capture to get the screenshots for the stuff. So, it's still a pretty awesome movie. Uh, so we got oh, yeah. two more uh, picked today to decide who goes first. A good old classic game of rock paper scissors shall be engaged. So like before, we do one, two, three, and then we go. So one, two, three, go. What'd you get? Scissors? Scissors. Oh, one, two. Oh, oh, what did I have? Scissors? I, we've been talking. Okay. Uh, oh, one, two, three. A go. Oh, <gasps> paper. Ah! Oh, one, a two, a three. A go. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> one, two, three. A go. Paper. <laughs> oh, Tied. God. One, two, three. A go. Scissors. <laughs> One, two, three, go! <laughs> oh, it backfired. I should have picked scissors again. Scissors, I win. Okay, yeah. so this is a this is a film that I saw shortly after it came out. Um, I hadn't seen it until I met my wife 
I typically stayed away from from this like genre of film because it just wasn't really my thing. You know, I was more into like the kind of like the gory, scary films, not really like the ghosty ones. Um, just like kind of like the 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 paranormal activity genre. Uh, I just wasn't really into that that sort of thing like at all. Um, and and this is a studio. And you'll find out why when I start going. <laughs> nice. Nice. But I have since um, kind of changed my tune on that uh, due, due to my wife kind of exposing me to like the, the absolute best that that type of, of horror um, has. Um, yeah. Th so I'm going with uh, Hereditary, um, which... Yeah, which is a really, really gnarly film. Um, it is A24, and if you don't know who A24 is, see like uh, like Midsummer or their newest film. I think it's Talk to Me or Speak to Me or, or one of those. Uh, it, that movie's pretty good. Um, but it, if you really want to see A24, which is the name of the studio, um, at its absolute premiere, um, Hereditary is what you want to see. Uh, it came out in 2018. It is directed by Ari Aster, who uh, also did Midsummer, I believe. Um, this is a film that makes you feel a certain way. It's it's one it's um, a A24 is great in the way that their their films are made really really well, and the story is really great. But they're 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 hard to watch. Cringy is is not the right word because cringy implies that it's not of like a a high standard or or high floor. But cringy is almost the the word you want to use when it comes to trying to watch an A twenty four film. Um, it's pretty much about the the grandma in this family dies, and th throughout the film, the daughter who has uh, who's married to a psychiatrist and has two kids, both are young. Um, th throughout the film, she's going through all of her mom's stuff and you know discovers that her mom was a, a leader of, of this cult and they worshiped the demon Paimon. And uh, I'm not gonna get into too much of that stuff, but it, it's, it's pretty much like the, um, the cult is like inlaid in their future and uh has has put in place a lot of things and throughout the film things just really start going wrong um it's a really depressing dark film there's not a lot of color um a lot of blacks and grays um it's it's a it's a gnarly watch uh, it's great it's really good um uh, but it's one of those movies where you watch once or twice and you're like all right i've checked that off my box and i and i'm gonna going to move on and watch other things. Maybe things with a little bit of color and life. <laughs> um, you have to have there, there are a to few... wash it down with. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, they made the film for, for only $10 million and they made $82 million. So uh, A24 is, is like famously known for creating these films on the real cheap uh, and uh, getting a lot out of them. Uh, there's one scene, uh, I'm, I'm not going to get too much in into it with a, uh, with a light pole. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen it, Mike, but it's, it's pretty gnarly. Uh, it involves a, a nut allergy and a pole and someone trying to breathe and they stick their head out the window and in a car going, and you can probably piece that together. But, uh, yeah, it's a it, it's a great film. It's really good. It's really well made. It's 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 kind of a cringy watch, but it's one of those like if you want to see the absolute best of this type of film, this is the one that that you want to watch. It really uh, was the springboard for a a twenty four and kind of what we know of them now. Um, so whenever a twenty four comes out with anything, um, always give it a look because it's probably going to be really good probably going to be sort of a cringy hard watch but uh, it's going to be made really well it's going to have a really good story it's going to have a good cast um generally it's just going to be a really good film uh and hereditary is is one of those films i would say the last like maybe 15 20 minutes 
of the film uh, are some of the scariest moments uh, in like any film. Uh, it, the the story really comes to a head in the third act, which is, in my opinion, where a lot of films kind of start falling apart. And I've noticed that more and more throughout my adult life is is a lot of films build up this insane climax and then just don't don't bring it home. You know, Horror and movies uh, or just like in general. Just in general, um, I've just kind of gotten to the point where I'm like, what's this third act going to be? Um, is it gonna is it gonna bring home you know what it's been trying the entire film? It's just something that I've observed kind of in my adult life that I find the hardest part for films now is to bring home the third act and Hereditary absolutely crushes that. Um, so yeah, Hereditary is that film for me. If you haven't seen it, um, I highly suggest you watch it maybe once or twice and then never again because it's a tough watch, but it's great. Um, what are some scary. of uh, A24's other uh, big hits for those who may not know or may not have realized that it's the same company from a movie that they've already seen and enjoyed? So if you've seen uh, uh, X, uh, the movie is just called X. Uh, it's got Mia Goth in it. Um, that is, that's really good. Um, Pearl is A24 as well. It's a actually based on the, the, the same story. Um, there's going to be uh, X, Pearl, and then uh, Maxine, which is all a part of the same story, the same character. Pearl, sort of, Pearl is the villain in X. X, um, um, Pearl is a prequel to X. And then Maxine will take place after uh, X, or Pearl. So they're, they've created this like crazy story, but it's X is very, very good. It has this like really interesting uh, alligator kill that like you weren't expecting at all because it's not a creature feature at all um but yeah you've got x you've got pearl you've got mac mac maxine coming out if it if you want to see the parallel to hereditary uh so hereditary like i said it's very dark a lot of blacks and grays not a lot of color if you want to see a24's parallel to that you want to watch Midsummer. It's very bright, it's very colorful, but somehow A24 gives you the same cringy, hard to watch elements that make A24 films great. Uh, and the same things apply in Mid Midsummer for sure. But uh, A24 is a studio, a a as a, a big time horror fan, check out A24 because they're, they're, their stuff is always highbrow, it always has um, it's always made well, uh, and yeah, as a horror fan uh, of anybody, um, I highly suggest checking out A24's stuff for sure. Gotcha. I haven't seen Hereditary. I know that I've watched a trailer of it, though. Um, I've seen, like, a trailer for it. That's the most I can say I've seen. Uh, but I'll, I'll be seeing it soon, because I don't have a choice as I edit these videos. It's your chance yeah. to so, introduce me to good things or torture me with horrible things. Well, th this would be a, this is going to be a tough watch for you. It's great, it's good, but it's a tough watch for sure. Oh god. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, I'll check it out. Um, I don't think I've really seen any of A24 stuff. I was kind of hoping to like recognize one or two other things you said, um, and aside from reputation. With Midsummer, I've never heard even heard of the other three that you threw out there. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. I mean, their their stuff is solid. Uh, they're they're developing a Friday the Thirteenth show for P Peacock, which is really exciting. And A A twenty four almost got the rights to Halloween, which would have been incredible. Uh, because I think they could have done a lot with that story. So really excited for the show, and uh, we will certainly be getting Peacock or whatever that is um, so that we can enjoy a Friday the 13th TV show, which is, I think, a cool idea. I want to say they already did that, didn't they? Like in like the 90s? I don't know. Maybe they have, but I would certainly think that kind of a technology-wise... Um, it could be something really exciting now just because of where the TV genre is. 
Oh, uh, yeah. There was. 87 to 1990. I think it's like some kind of a... Uh... It's not what you think it is. <laughs> like, it's called that, but it's got like nothing to do with uh, the other stuff. I think it's about like other other supernatural things. Um, but I know I've seen gotcha. something like cool. that. Uh, that's cool, though. Nice. Um, hopefully it works out. Um, hopefully they, they, they can do stuff like that, because I think that uh, franchises like that uh, need to be placed in the hands of uh, more creative individuals than where they've been. Uh, I would agree with that. For sure. <laughs> uh, so, for my first pick, uh, Ghosts. Um, not that I had a theme here, but like I just ended up picking two movies that are very ghosty. Uh, cool. So my first pick is a movie that I originally saw like on TV uh, when I was younger, and it was like I don't think I, I I didn't catch it from the beginning. I caught it like one third of the way through and just became totally enamored with it. And then I forgot about it, and then like 20 years later, poof, I remember this thing. And then I watched the whole thing, and it was like, wow, that's uh, it's very good. Uh, 13 Ghosts. Uh, I thought you were going to say that, and I absolutely love that movie. <laughs> yeah, it's got uh, uh, our, our buddy uh, Matthew Lillard. Um, it's Ugh. got the dude from Galaxy Quest and Monk. I think his last name yep. is Shaloub. I forget his first name. Tony Shaloub. Tony Shaloub. Uh, it's got that guy who like makes me think of the dude that played Gimli in Lord of the Rings, but it's not him. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, it's also a remake, uh, which that I didn't really know, um, but it gets even weirder. The remake, the original film, which was made in 1960, uh, was very like one of those 3D gimmicky movies, and... Mm. Much like the remake, they got that thing where you have to wear the glasses to see the ghosts. Uh, but apparently the film itself was like presented in blue, and then the ghost effects were in red. So you, the audience is wearing the terrible 3D glasses, and like the ghost would be like red on their on the thing. Uh, cool. But that also meant that you could take off the glasses and not see the ghosts, I think, was the whole gimmick. Uh, so the audience was very much... In the pers- dealing with the same thing that the characters in the movie were. Um, otherwise, I don't think that movie did all that well. Like, I've never even heard of it until looking up, like, some facts about the, the current one, the, the one from 2002. I, yeah, I didn't know that either. It's definitely not a horror classic. Um, at least if it is, it's never come, it's never crossed my desk, which is saying something, because, like, mm. I, I was really plugged into the movie world for a while. Uh, I was a big watcher of like Cinemassacre's Monster Madness yearly thing. Heck and, like, yeah, I don't man! Think he ever brought that one up. Um, I was in like f- I did like a bunch of film classes, and those were very like retro oriented. So just never heard of it. So like I don't think it has much of a following. Uh, but the remake was pretty well received. Uh, so the basic uh, idea here is there are. Uh, there's like this this house, and the house is kind of like a, a much better version of the shifting pyramid from Aliens vs. Predator, because uh, <laughs> like the whole thing is mechanical and can move around. Yeah. Uh, and there's there's twelve ghosts uh, in this house that have been placed there to be used as part of a ritual. Uh, and the further the movie goes, the more the house is shifting. Uh, to allow the ghosts more and more access to various places. More of the ghosts are getting released from, like, their prison cells. There's, like, a whole thing where, like, there's, like, magic writing on the walls. The ghosts can't pass through these walls. Uh, And you have to wear special glasses to even see the ghosts. Uh, That does not mean that the ghosts will not interact with you if you're not wearing the glasses. You are totally uh, fair game to the hostile ghosts. Either you see it coming or you don't if you are or are not wearing the glasses. Um, And some of the things that this movie does really well is the makeup and the prosthetics for the ghosts. Uh, Absolutely. Some of them are, like, just very genuinely terrifying. Others are just, like, that's just really good makeup and, like, really good effects. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not all the ghosts are, like, hostile serial killers. A couple of them are. Uh, and, like, those are the ones that have, like, some of the most intense costumes. Um, but definitely scary. Um, and, and also, like, Matthew, Matthew Lillard just, like, crushes it as his role. Oh, <laughs> he's, he's like so this... Good. He's, like, almost this, like, parody of, like, 
the psychics and mediums you see, like, in TV shows and stuff, where, like, instead of him being, like, very emotionally affected by whatever's happening, like, like, oh, I feel pain, he gets, like, traumatized. Like, he's having seizures and, like, yeah. hitting the floor from pain. Like, it is just the extreme version of what you see those characters doing in those other movies and stuff. So, like, when he touches someone, he gets this, like, forced flashback, like, freaking cripples him for a second. Like, the man is in pain through the entire movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he kind of has this, like, cool, like, sort of redemption arc that he goes through. Um, mm-hmm. It's a very cool movie. Like, I I think the the great costumes and effects for the ghost characters, coupled with how well it utilizes the setting... Like, that shifting mm-hmm. house, it's like a glass house that shifts. It's like all this clockwork and, and mechanisms. They use it really well. And, like, they didn't just, like, do it. It's, I feel like a lesser movie would have only had, like, the third act set in this location. Whereas, like, the whole film, pretty much outside of the opening, is there. And, like, mm-hmm. they use it really well. Doors are shifting and opening. Characters are killed by some of these mechanisms. The the ghosts have to deal with how they can't get to the character sometimes. They use the scenery in very creative ways. There's like a really cool scene where they actually dislodge one of the walls and carry it around and they crush a ghost with it between two of the walls that the ghost can't pass through. Like there's really cool ways that they use it. So they were going nuts with that movie and it was very well done. Um, like it a lot. There's also multiple twists regarding the characters and who the ghosts are. Uh, which makes it like more entertaining and like you kind of miss some things if you don't pay attention. Uh, so overall, like super love that movie. Uh, it was fun to watch it again. It really held my attention as I was going through it. Um, it is very good, and it, it and is obviously yeah. you've seen it too. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. It 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 contains one of my one of my top kills like of all time. Oh. Um, the the lawyer. Uh, I believe he's a lawyer. He is, And yes. the sliding glass wall. Yep. Awesome. I <laughs> love that kind of stuff, and I think that they, they, they do that scene really well. That's, like, the only character that I, like, looking into the original looking into the original movie, I think that character was, like, the main bad guy of the original film. Uh, so he's, like, one of the few characters to make the transition from the original to the remake and have his role mostly unchanged. Uh mm. Because, like, he wants the, the family fortune or whatever the hell's going on in yeah. the original film. Uh, that's, not, that's not a thing in the new one. Um, but, like, that character is in both versions. But, yeah, he gets... He's one of the victims of the house. Uh, yes. Whereas there are people that get, like, killed or, or attacked by the hostile spirits. Um, I think the other cool thing is they're not all hostile. Only a couple of them are. And that makes it more yeah. interesting. Because, like, some of them seem to take some kind of delight in, like, scaring the characters. Others just seem like they want attention. Like, they just want you to kind of talk to them. And that's, like, a big thing. Like, it's almost like that lesson from A Sixth Sense where he's like, well, why don't you just talk to him? Like, I feel like a couple of them have that kind of vibe going for them. Uh, And then you have, what's it, the Jackal, the Juggernaut, and the Hammer. Uh, Those three. And, And the, what's his name, the Torn Prince. Uh, those four like want to kill you. <laughs> like if you if you are in the same room as them, they're coming for your life. Uh, it's like they are like the the threat, the main threat that the cast uh, is dealing with as they navigate the house. Are those four? Uh, the juggernaut um, is supposed to be uh, the worst of them all, but I feel like the hammer is because the hammer is the one that has all the railroad spikes in them. Uh, mm. And I'm like, how is that not the scariest, toughest one? Apparently, it's the Juggernaut who just looks like a tall guy. <laughs> but like, which is the one with the box on his head? The Jackal. The Jackal. Yeah, that 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 was really cool. He gets the most screen time because he attacks multiple of the main characters um, yep. across multiple scenes. Uh, and then the Juggernaut is the one who's featured in the opening. Uh, he's in a junkyard, and that's where you kind of get the first. Uh, you get to see. Matthew Lillard's character as the tortured psychic, like he touches the ground and he gets visions of all the deaths there, and he looks at the main the main bad guy in the movie Cyrus, 
Um, he looks at him and he says, I didn't catch this before. He's like, you, you said there were only nine victims. There's 40 bodies here. Like, so this ghost has killed like double digit number of people. Some of which when he was alive. And then I guess the rest as a ghost. So it's like, Oh my God, (laughs) that, that scene to me is also like what I would have wanted to see with like a really hardcore ghostbusters remake. Because at oh, the end of the day, yeah. they are there to catch that ghost, right? They're doing what Ghostbusters yeah. do, but the ghost wants to kill you and does kill multiple people in that scene. And I'm like, man, like this is it, man. Just like take this and give them proton packs and you have my dream R-rated Ghostbusters thing. Because <laughs> mm. Ghostbusters, the, the one and two, like, yeah, they're comedies, but they work really well because they take their stuff super seriously like, there yeah. are stakes. There is danger. Gozer wants to kill all the world, right? All you have to do is add that kind of, like, violence like 13 Ghost has, and I think you achieve a really interesting middle point. <laughs> That's a great point. Give me, like, a... Like a Ghostbusters modern video game that's like insanely violent. Like yeah. I would absolutely play that. I think it would. I think actually, now that you said that, a video game would probably work better. That probably wouldn't work as a movie, strictly because critics would be like, "This isn't Ghostbusters," uh, right. and I'd probably agree with them. I'd be like, "Yeah, my bad. Um, should I call it yeah. something else?" <laughs> yeah, my bad. Ghost capturers. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. So. C-13 Ghosts. It's a good time. It's on TV still all the time. I have, we have YouTube TV now, and I was scrolling through. Like It still gets rerun all the time. So check it out, uh, or rent it, or whatever. Redbox, like, give Redbox your business. Call Redbox, ask him to stock 13 Ghosts. They will, they will do it, because they need your money. Nice. Yeah, for sure. So you just just, just to uh, to finish up on, on that film, um, you made a, a comment about the practical effects oh, on the ghost. Hold on one second. Sorry. Sure. But for our viewers, um, the practical effects in that film uh, are so good. Um, each ghost looks totally unique. Um, they're scary. There's a few scenes with... Um, there's a certain scene in a bathroom where it skips between what... Uh, the cast can see and what the ghosts can see uh, and it certainly um, uh, is 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 of great variety and it, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to not give out spoilers but man, it's so good um, 13 ghosts is a, is a is a really cool film it's a niche film um, it has a great premise it's got a good cast um, great movie for sure for sure um, oh did did she get her cone off it looks like she did. Uh, did yeah, she got her cone off? Oh, she got her cone off. No. Yeah, it's back on. She was, of course, messing with her face. Oh no! <sighs> Goodness. Clever girl. Crazy kitty. <laughs> Clever girl. Very nice. Very nice. Great movie. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this next film is one that I. Uh, absolutely love. I love the setting. I love the cast. Um, it's got some some goofy elements to it. Technology wasn't quite there to pull off exactly what they wanted to do, uh, but it looks good enough. Um, that film is Event Horizon. <gasps> um, That's a good it's, one. It, yeah, it's a film that I really love, uh, directed by Paul Anderson, starring Sam Neill and Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, it's it's pretty much about um, a a ship that humans create that has the ability to teleport uh, anywhere in the universe, and it it teleports somewhere beyond our universe, and then teleports back to the material plane. Um, it's gone for I can't remember how many years, but it it vanishes and everybody moves on about their day and just says, oh, we made a huge mistake. All these pe- people are dead. Whatever. Uh, and then it comes back, and then has a distress call, and then of course uh, they find a team uh, to to go to the ship and figure out what's going on. It's a premise that I absolutely love. Um, Sam Neill is great in it. Um, 
just from the from the very jump, the beginning of the film, uh, you can tell something's not quite right with Sam Neill. Uh, maybe has some some family trauma, something with his wife. Um, Mike always jokes about the teleporting scenes with the uh, the pencil, and uh, this movie uh, <laughs> includes one of those scenes for sure. Um, but again, it's got a really good cast. It's got a great premise. Um, spoiler alert for everybody: um, the ship Event Horizon uh, it teleports to hell, and then it teleports back, and it it pulls things from from hell. Uh, and it is it it includes certain scenes from from hell that are so cool and I wish they would have included more but apparently it did and the studio asked them to reduce the amount of scenes that took place in hell um, which is which is an unfortunate scenario because I think some of the best parts of the film are when they include those elements um, yeah, so when it first came out, uh, it was not, like, people didn't like it at all. Uh, it wasn't reviewed well. Um, it just didn't didn't do well. Maybe it was the time of year. Maybe it was the technology at the time just wasn't quite right. Uh, maybe it could be anything. But now it has quite the, the cult following. Um, <clears throat> the for, for, for Mike, someone who likes to collect uh, 4K things, um, Event Horizon will never be on on 4k but uh, it is I, I, is it really yeah very nice <laughs> uh, I, I i had had heard that the footage was lost and they had no way to restore it well uh, what that what but... that would mean is that the four, if that's true which that probably is true it's true for a lot of films unfortunately um that means that they'd be doing the 4k from like an existing print which is definitely mm. not the best way to do it um, whereas what they want to do is take it from the original print, um, right. the original stock or whatever, and that does mean that that stock is destroyed in the process, but what you then have is a, a new pristine copy that can last forever. Mm. Um, mm. And it, it is on 4K Blu-ray. I didn't want to buy it because, like, I don't know that I, like... Maybe I read what you were talking about. Maybe like that was in the back of my head, but for some reason I was just like, "Nah, I already own it on regular Blu-ray, and I don't know that I really care to have that one on 4K." Sure. Well, I'm glad that it's it's out on on modern, you know, DVD format. That's great. It's a good film. It begs to be watched. Uh, some funny things about it: uh, it has a really goofy beginning that makes you think that you're gonna watch like. I don't know, like a Spy Kids film or some, something. <laughs> like, like, like the beginning of it does not fit at all. Robert Rodriguez like the, presents Event Horizon. It's like, it's like the 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 credits are like flying to the screen, like. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. It does have that. Weird it's thing. it is so not fitting. It, it's almost like they 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 made the entire film with like an entire group that were like all on the same page and then paid somebody to do that part and didn't tell them what the film was about. <laughs> it's what it feels like. It's the weirdest thing. So like it, it immediately sets off on this like just really strange beginning and you're like, what in the hell is this? Uh, and, and then of course, as soon as it finishes that, it, it, it goes into the film and like immediately jumps into like a suspenseful scary scene with, with Sam Neill. But uh, like I said, really good cast. Sam Neill is the star protagonist, antagonist. You don't really know he's until the end of the movie. He's all things. Yeah, Lawrence he's, Fishburne is, yeah. the, is, is my favorite character. He's cool. He's great. Yeah, he's 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 really really good in the film. Um, the coolest thing about this film, uh, in my opinion at least, is that it inspired one of the greatest survival horror video games ever made. And that would be Silent Dead Space Hill. One. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's funny. Clock Tower. But no, Dead. Um, no, I think it's. Um, yeah, it's Dead Space. Donkey Kong Country Three, Undead. I almost started playing that the other day. As a matter of fact, I just played through DKC Two. So good. Anyway, uh, yeah, no. Uh, if you like, Dead, if you like is... Dead Space and you haven't seen 
uh, Event Horizon, you you need to rectify that mistake like immediately. It's the closest thing to like a Dead Space movie, uh, although it doesn't involve like you know necessarily the undead and these creatures. It has that yeah. like insanity thing going for it. Um, oh yeah, it it is simultaneously the best Doom movie and the best Dead Space movie. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. No, it's got some. It's got some really cool practical gore effects. Um, it's got some 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 great. Uh, it's just to me like, I, I, and I know this is like a crazy thing to say, but I almost think that it's like Sam Neill, like maybe at his best. And I know that's like a wild thing to say because Sam Neill is in Jurassic Park one and slays that role. But like Sam Neill as a villain is great. Uh, he's a villain in, this is way off, but in Peaky Blind Blinders, he's one of the villains and he's, he's great in that role. Uh, I just love me some Sam Neill and it's kind of like, um, Rob, Rob and Williams playing a villain. Like, you don't, they, they, they always play the good guy that whenever they cross into that villain role, you're like, man, this dude's good. Like he can do anything. Uh, and I think Sam Neill kind of proves that in his, uh, did you take, take it off again? Oh no. No. Um, <laughs> look at her. Sneaky. <laughs> Crazy girl. She's too smart, man. Um, um, but yeah, no, no. Um, Event Horizon, great film. Uh, really, really enjoy it. It's got a great premise. And like Mike said, if you, if you have played Dead Space, but you have not seen event horizon i i implore you watch event horizon it's it's very good except for the first like five minutes and that really weird uh crawl in the beginning uh very strange but uh yeah yeah event horizon is that film um i don't know if we just want to shoot through a few like ran ran randoms we have a little bit of time left uh on films that we would recommend well, I got my second pick. To, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to make it real brief um, <clears throat> to leave time for Oh, that. oops, you're right. Whoops. I forgot how to count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I will say the last thing on Event Horizon, I feel like the existence of the Dead Space franchise and, like, Doom 3 and then the Doom reboots, I think, did give that film, like, new life from... Today's audiences, um, I, I can I can see why that movie didn't do too well in theaters. Because like, who the hell is that movie for? It's like right. this horrible, dark, R-rated, twisted, gruesome movie that I feel yep. like was just kind of out of its time. I feel like it would have done way better if it came out like after 2010, when like the Saw movies had well established and made that kind of stuff more the norm for like horror right. films like that. Uh, but very good movie. Uh, I didn't see it for the first time until like less than three years ago. Um, nice. So I, I liked it. Um, oh yeah. My second pick, though, I wanted to keep brief, no matter where we were with the time. Even if we had a lot of time left, I still make it really brief because it's one of those things where it's like, you know, what more can I say that hasn't already been said, kind of things. Um, oh, okay. So thinking a lot, I had a lot of stuff I wanted to like throw out here, and I think to be better as honorable mentions than like something to, something to talk about for a long time um, but uh, if you haven't seen it I think it remains one of the best horror movies post the year 2000 to this day and that's The Conjuring ooh <laughs> that is a that is a great pick man that's a great pick oh my I am like just routinely disappointed with like horror films that have been coming out like in the last 15 or so years they just, they're way too formulaic. And, and The Conjuring commits a lot of these sins, too, to be totally, to be real. But it just executes everything much better. But, like, so many of these movies are just, like, the same thing over and over again with how they handle what's going on. The, uh, the Paranormal Activity sequels and, like, all the various Bloomhouse projects. They're, they just, like, really, I, don't, I just don't get anything from them. And, like, it makes me... It makes me just, like, instinctively recoil from, like, any horror movies that come out nowadays. Um, but I haven't seen any of the ones that you mentioned today from A24. Uh, mm. 
you didn't mention like any of those Bloomhouse ones, and I was just like, I was going to be like, oh, no, because <laughs> um, I've no. seen I've seen more more of those than I would have liked to uh, with other friends and, and and whatnot. But despite the fact that The Conjuring very much commits a lot of those same sins, where like you know the ghost activity starts off as harmless pranks and then gradually escalates to full on assault, uh, and like all those same things happen. It's just, like, executed way better. Like, the... It is shot better. The the way that the cinematography is done to make the environment scary is done better. The cast is incredible. Patrick Wilson uh, is just, like, oh. the most likable protagonist ever in those movies. Uh, and Vera Farmiga as, as his character's oh. wife. Also, just, like, very endearing and likable. Um... I think I think they are what ultimately like makes it more than what it would have been. I think if it didn't have them, it probably would have just been like another one of those like yeah, another one of those movies where the the ghost pranks people for an hour and a half and then punches one of them in the face toward the end. Um, yeah, because <laughs> they're all like that. It's it's getting really old. Um, even the nun, the nun sequel commits that sin. The the nun too apparently opens up with a full on homicide from the nun. But then when it goes to the school, it's just like pranks. <laughs> like it doesn't. Scooby Doo. Like, what are you doing? Scooby Doo. Um, so, uh, The Conjuring uh, got a lot of people's attention when it came out for its trailer. It did the clap clap thing, um, uh -huh. and I think that was like kind of famous at the time. Um, went kind of viral. Uh, that's that incident. <laughs> it's that's definitely creepy. Um, the the characters like. In, at the top of this attic in the dark and she's like locked in there and all she has is a match and then like there's if you have like a, a, a decent enough like sound system or like depending on what your speaker solution is I don't know how tenable this is, this is if you have just, just TV speakers but you can actually hear the ghost say like you want to play hide and clap and then, and then the clap happens wow um, that movie is definitely elevated by surround sound. I will say they they put their they put their time into it as far as making it uh, work like that. Um, <clears throat> but it's just it it takes all of those tiresome cliches, still uses them, but just something's different about it. Uh, mm -hmm. It just works, um, and it's rated R strictly for how scary it is. Um, mm -hmm. there is like no cussing at all and there's hardly any on-screen violence and yet it's rated R and when you dig into it it's apparently because of like the terror aspect it's just so scary that they rated it R <laughs> which is really interesting because I mean it is if you haven't seen it before and you watch that movie with like the lights turned off you know it's, it's, it's pretty creepy it does a good job of building tension in various scenes um, I think because the characters are so likable, you definitely feel some kind of th like terror when they are in jeopardy. Um, I think that's what works. Uh, but it's 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 one of James Wan's movie. Uh, James Wan famously directed Fast and Furious Seven. Nothing else. Uh, that's his thing. Uh, it's great. <laughs> yeah, no. So great pick. Great pick. Uh. I think Con Conjuring One and Two is are the the best examples of the the horror genre that um, Bethany, my wife, in, introduced me to. Like I said, you know, before I met her, I wasn't really into the. It wasn't a uh, genre that really in, in, intrigued me. I, I always thought there was a sense of cringe to it. But she was like, okay, okay, I understand that, but let's watch the the, the best examples of that style of film. And Con Conjuring 1 and 2 are, are both so good. They're both so good that I don't I don't really know which one is better. Um, and I know that's kind of a wild thing to say, but, but the more that I watch 2, the more that I think it's kind of closed the gap there uh, with 1. But... Yeah, those movies are so good. Um, I didn't know anything about Ed and Lorraine Warren or or any of that stuff um, uh, until 2018 when we watched um, Con during one and two. But yeah, those movies are great. Uh, they are for sure the the like 
like primo highbrow ghost horror films. So if you want to see the best that that sort of thing has, um, those two films are it for sure. For for me, I mean, from the from the cast, which you touched on that, you know, I I think for a lot of the Blumhouse films, um, there's just nothing of sub substance with like the cast and the writing. Like it's all just jump scares, imagery, finale, yep. and that's it. And with Conjuring 1 and 2, there's so much more going on. There's the family element. There's the Ed and Lorraine Warren element. There's the... They they bring all that stuff into the house with, like, all the lights and lamps and stuff, and those things start going off, and it just creates this this great sense of, of oh, yeah. fear they, and That's and, right. And they, do like the, they do, like, the Poltergeist thing, where, like, the team comes in with all their equipment, and much like Poltergeist, that movie takes place, like, it's a period piece, you know, technically. Mm-hmm. So, like, it, I think that's in the... Either it's, like, super early 80s or it's late 70s. It's one of those two. So, like, gotcha. they do all their ghost hunting with, like, Polaroid cameras and, and like, they, they wired up giant microphones to the rooms with, like, these thick aux cables. XLR, or whatever yeah. it would be. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, like, that's fun, too, because, like, there's more, there you know, there's... All that stuff is going on. Um, the only thing I'll say about the the based on a true story aspect. Um, look, man, ghosts aren't real. Stop. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's fun to believe in. That's, that's my perspective. But um, what do you mean they're not real? <laughs> like a lot of things, you can't prove or disprove that they do or don't exist. So stop. Sure. Uh, the Amityville Horror, which made made the Warrens very famous, like that family at one point was like, yeah, we, we made it up. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> um, now, as far as Ed and Lorraine Warren, there are only two things I want to say. Uh, thing number one. I knew I shouldn't have brought up their, their names. My, no, Mike's no, going to no. get on a soapbox here. <laughs> uh, no, apparently they're very nice people. Like, a lot of their critics who have, like, talked to them directly come out saying, like, no, they're really sincere and they're very nice, but you know, they're like ghosts aren't real. So like there's that part of it. <laughs> like they claim that they can prove that they're real, but their proof is nothing. It's the stuff that you see on those ghost TV shows. This thing is haunted because I said it is. Like that's that's the extent of what they can offer, but they're very nice. They're not like scummy jerks. I've never read that of them yet. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh rest in peace both of them. I think they're both deceased now. Um mm. Ed was deceased either right before or right after uh, the first Conjuring film came out. And then his wow. wife was a few years later. Um, the other thing I'll say, and this is where I'm going to take a, I'm gonna take a stab at him because the numbers just don't make sense. They, <laughs> they said... I knew it. <laughs> it's just really funny. Uh, apparently it was, cl- it was made claimed that they have worked over 10,000 cases. And I'm like, 10,000 cases? Like... What? Uh, Even if I, like, be super generous with the math and, like, start cases as of 1952, which is when they, like, officially opened their practice, uh, when did they retire? I don't know, but, like, that still still is, like, 15 cases a day (laughs) that they'd be working through. (laughs) And if I... No, it's one of those things where, like, they showed up and they're like... (laughs) (laughs) There's not a ghost here. Check. It's case number one today. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, what do you mean 10,000? You know how many days in a year there are? You divide that by the number. And like, it's like The numbers don't work. Like, you're not either. Either you're doing that or you're not giving your, or you're just making it up. Like, I don't know. I thought that was exceptionally funny because, like, I was being super generous with the math going all the way back to 1952. And the numbers get even wackier if I go, like, if, if, if the starting point is like more the range I expect it to be, like a thirty-year career, like it was like right. twenty-seven cases a day, and I was like, "There's just no way." They're just in the phone book, like, "Oh no, I know he's not haunted. That that one's done. That's good." Uh, that guy, he called me. It, it, it is haunted. There's a ghost there. Check. <laughs> like it just doesn't make any sense at all. That's so funny. Oh, it's great. Um. But yeah, no, the, the, those films are great. Um, I, but, I think that they've they've progressively gotten worse. But that you could apply that yeah. to, to 
most things, really. For sure. Um, but I think one and two are, are films that you can rewatch and uh, they, they don't lose any of their... It, it's This is a weird comp to make, but like Aliens 1 to Aliens 2, like throughout my life, when I was a young young kid, Aliens 2 was the best one, and it wasn't even close, and it didn't matter, and that was the choice. Well, since I've kind of grown up a little bit, I'm not so sure Aliens 1's not better than 2, and I think that Conjuring 1 and 2 are kind of a similar thing, where the more I watch both films, the closer that gap is, and um, I'm not so sure 2's not, not better than 1, but that's just kind of my my opinion on that they're they're both great films but uh yeah great pick i i hoped that's what you were gonna say i was so worried you were gonna go like paranormal activity six they're back (laughs) or something (laughs) they're back (laughs) i've only seen the first uh, three of those movies and i just refuse to go any further because they're so boring they're so boring they get they get interesting in the end but they are just so terribly boring I, I have successfully spared myself uh, a single one of them, which is which is quite the feat. I I would I would almost say that you should see the first one. I think it's the best of them. It's still like it's still very boring, but at least when it starts to get when when again when it elevates from the stupid pranks that are happening off screen, and then it starts to get more serious. The found footage aspect does lend for some scary scenes. Um, largely, still not a very good movie. I don't know. They got so popular, and I and I'm I'm not trying to sound all pretentious, but like I don't really see why um, they're not they're not as scary or as or as good as the marketing was trying to make them out to be. But they were making hand over fist and money because the budget's like fifty two dollars. So all they had to do was make any money in the theaters, and they'd be profitable. Um, yeah. Oh God. Uh, now let's do uh, real quick some honorable mentions. Um, okay. My second pick was gonna be the Blob. <laughs> uh, nice. Oh man, that's a great one. That's another really good like. It, it, the only parts of it that haven't aged well are the scenes where they use blue screen effects, but otherwise, um, the 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 makeup, the effects, the the props. It's one of those just incredible. Uh, movies of that type like The Thing and The Fly and uh, even going back to the stuff last week like Dog Soldiers and, and whatnot. Like It's one of those things where they just nailed the physical effects. Um, hmm. It's also a remake. Uh, a lot of people are aware of the original because it was like a really fun little campy Steve McQueen movie. Um, uh, and the remake was like yeah, we're not going for camp. We're gonna like we're gonna we're gonna just just annihilate people on screen. And like it is like one of the most gruesome movies I think I've ever seen. Um, it is so rare yes. to come across a horror film that kills kids, um, and like not only does it do that, but it does that as one of the most like uh, just insane on-screen events. Um, like, Lord, <laughs> uh, that one is getting a 4K remaster. Uh, it comes out in like yeah. a few weeks. I already have it pre-ordered. Nice, awesome. So I watched that film for the first time like a year ago, which is wild. Oh, wow. And man, the practical effect kills in that movie are just incredible. Um, that movie's great. Um, I forget her name, but she's the, the female lead. She's also in, in Saw, and I've met her. She's a very, very sweet lady. Oh, wow. Yep. I think, yep, yep, yep. I think the kid... That... I forget her name. I think in the movie, the kid that dies, is that her younger brother? I, I, yes. One of yes. them's, one of them is her sibling, the other one is the sibling's friend. Mm-hmm. So either she yeah. lost a family member, or she is never getting a babysitter gig ever again, because uh, her charge was killed. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so yeah. The Blob is a great effects movie. What's what is, what's uh, another honorable mention for you? So I was gonna go uh, Scream One, ah. uh, the greatest slasher meta film of all time. Uh, it is, it's one of my top films. I absolutely love the cast. It did things that that films hadn't really done before. It took a star 
and killed it in the first five minutes. And a film that has the gusto to do something like that, um, it, it, it better have the chops. And and Scream One certainly has that. Uh, it is a whodunit in the the purest sense of the word. And I think that's what makes the series kind of a timeless thing. I think it's gotten a, a little bit dull through, throughout the years, but the idea that the killers are uh, killer or killers uh, have been in front of you the entire time creates this 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 unique sense when you watch the film. Um, just because you, you want to look at every single tiny little thing to try to di dissect who the killer is, which of the killers were in this scene, which of the killers were in that scene, uh, based on how tall they are, <laughs> like just crazy weird things that the fan base has has tried to find. But it's it's Wes Craven at his absolute best. It has a great cast. It launched um, a just an incredible series and franchise that has spanned into. Uh, TV shows, um, the scary movie franchise uh, has pr pretty much pulled from the first Scream film, and that's all it really is. Um, but yeah, Scream 1 is is so good. Um, it is it, uh, it it has aged like fine wine, and, and it has Matt Lillard in it as well. Um, in in one of the the third act uh, in the house is like Matt Matt Lillard's like best moment oh, when yeah. when 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 him and uh um uh uh Skeet all all which stab each other and he's like I'm bleeding man <laughs> like that scene is so good it's so good he has a great um, range in there yeah. cuz like you can see that he's like oh. genuinely scared and like kind of a wuss but then like there are moments where you can see his real aggression come out and you're like yeah I can I get that he's a murderer. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> um, spoilers, obviously. Uh, then again, spoilers, spoilers for a movie that's getting toward 30 years old. Like, meh. Yeah. I feel like there's a there's yeah. a time on that uh, that has long since expired. <laughs> um, so, I knew that I wanted to discuss Event Horizon for sure because of the elements of dead, dead, dead space. But that other slot... I jumped between uh, Hereditary and, and Scream uh, and decided on Hereditary. What about you? Did you have a uh, Did you have any more that you wanted to uh, that you wanted to bring up that just didn't quite make the cut? Um, no, I think I got all the ones that came into my mind for the purposes of this project. Um, I have to tell you, Mike, I am absolutely ashamed that I did not even think of Virus. And I just want you to know that I almost audibled in the middle of this and went with Virus because I love that movie so much. But it's, I just love that movie. It's so funny because uh, yesterday night, Beth a a asked me, she goes, okay, what's a horror film that, or a scary film that you like that nobody else likes? And Virus didn't even cross my mind. And I'm <laughs> so ashamed. Uh, that's a good, Virus was a good time. Um, I enjoyed watching that. Um, Heck yeah, man. Because we talked I about that, that for the first time on our AVP uh, Alien playthrough is when that Heck came yeah. up. Um, although, I think the bulk of that conversation got cut because it was happening when I got lost in the game for like 20 minutes. Um, so some of it's there. I think the only part that survived is the part where you're like, so we're going to watch Virus later? <laughs> so someone watching is going to be like, what's this about Virus? Um, <laughs> nice. Uh, but, uh, that is a good one, uh, for sure. Um, this has been fun to, uh, reflect on, uh, movies of the October, uh, variety, more or less. Um, <laughs> uh, definitely gonna do it again. Uh, and as far as, like, movie and film content, who knows what we'll end up doing. Well, maybe we'll talk about current releases every now and then, or, or do some kind of throwback thing, or it's like, remember this one? Um, and dedicate maybe more time to them, because we were picking multiple for this. Um, so there's all kinds of things we got planned. Uh, thank you so much, everyone who is uh, watching this. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, the channel uh, recently passed 900 subscribers, which is uh, crazy. I'm very grateful for that. Everyone who's watching and subscribed. Um, currently doing live stream stuff now, too. Playing Paper Mario. 
Uh, I think I'm going to start doing some Super Nintendo stuff as well, uh, shake it up a little bit. Um, Tori, you got your own thing going on, though, man. Yeah, man. So me and my twin, uh, Tom Thomas, have been doing some sports pod podcasts. It's been really fun. We are college football nuts. Um, our channel is TNT Twincast, and the name of our podcast is Garnet and Goal Line. We are, we are huge Florida State fans, as you can see, grew up in tally. So, uh, yeah, thanks for letting me plug that, man. I appreciate that for sure. Definitely. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We will see you on the next one.